Hello all, my name is Krishnang and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today in this particular video, we are going to understand how to handle categorical variables which are ordinal in behavior. Now, when I say ordinal, that basically means we can basically assign ranks to that particular categories. In my previous video, I've already shown you a video regarding, uh, you know, how to handle nominal categories uh, with the help of target or mean encoding. But uh, now we'll try to understand how to handle this ordinal encoding. Uh, and uh, we'll try to see also a practical applications regarding it and uh, what exactly it is what are the advantages and disadvantages in it and again there are various techniques to handle ordinal variables also so yes i will move ahead towards the implementation make sure you watch this video till the end so that you get more and more knowledge now we already know and some of my videos that i have already uploaded previously is regarding how to handle category features so if I consider ordinal category feature, ordinal category feature basically means that if the features can be assigned with some ranks, you know, at that time we can basically use this technique which is called as ordinal number encoding or label encoding. So, uh, first of all, let us discuss what is ordinal data. Ordinal data is categorical statistical data type where the variables have natural order categories and distance between those categories is not known. Okay, so that basically means we can rank these categories in short uh, and if you don't know about uh, other types of category features, they are nominal and ordinal category feature. In ordinal, you can rank this like excellent, good, bad, fantastic, okay, don't like. So in similarly in nominal, you cannot rank them. So there will be some number of unique categories that will be present like pencil pen. If I take an example of, uh, you know, whenever you're doing some assignments, Suppose you'll be using pen, pencil or eraser, you may be having cow, dog or cat. Okay, So all these things are there. Apart from that, some more examples that you want to see. Student grade in an exam, ABC or fail, education level with categories, PhD rank from 1 to 4. Okay, So all these things are there. You can basically read this. Again, all these notes will be provided in the GitHub. Now what we are going to do is that, uh, you know, uh, the main thing, why I'm saying label encoding is that because suppose if I have some categories, okay, if I have some categories like uh, if I take this example, student exam like A, B, C or A. Now what I can do is that you know that a student who is having a grade as A will be definitely higher than B, will be definitely higher than C, uh, you know, and similarly B will be higher than C, C will be higher than failure, right? So it is better that we can assign some labels to it and definitely I would like to assign uh, like A having the highest label like suppose there are four labels over here I can assign four to A, B to three, C to uh, two and fail I can assign the value as one. So let us see an example and uh, this particular example I'm going to take uh, you know the weekdays so I'll assign some day, dates and from those I'll be considering uh, weekdays so that basically means like uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and for Monday, I'll assign one for, you know, Tuesday, I'll assign two for the Wednesday, I'll assign three. So similarly, I'll assign like this numbers and the highest uh, number I'll assign it to the Saturdays and Sundays, because as you know that all the IT people, Saturdays and Sundays are holidays. So we'll try to assign higher value to those uh, days itself. Again, this is one other way of handling ordinal technique. Again, there are various ways in my previous video. I've already shown you about uh, frequency encoding, count encoding, which is also an ordinal technique. Uh, if you have not seen that video, the link will be provided in the description box or in top of the card. Okay. Now what we will be doing is that uh, I'll be considering this, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be taking this. Now what I'm doing over here is that first of all, I will import pandas and date time. So after importing it, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a variable with dates and from that extra extract the weekday. So weekday basically means from Monday to all the, all the uh, names, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And I'll create a list of dates within 20 days difference from today. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. And that is basically done through this particular uh, code. Uh, and finally, I'm converting into a data frame. And if I go and see, this is my day over here. You can see over here. And I think I'll be getting the top 20th records. Okay. So after that, what I do is that I'll just take the weekday name from this. And uh, I just have to use df of day dot dt. So dt is a parameter inside that. And you have various parameters apart from this. I press dot tab uh, then you'll be able to get it a lot of parameters are basically present I'm not able to see the parameters right now but yes uh, apart from weekday name there are many more so as soon as I do this uh, here is my uh, you know uh, so it has got executed now you can see that for each and every day these are my days of week okay so that is what is created now what I'll do is that now in order to assign ranking again here I have to create a dictionary 
Now in this dictionary values, uh, as this is ordinal, I'll prepare as Monday is equal to one, Tuesday is equal to two, Wednesday is equal to three, Thursday is equal to four, Friday is equal to five, Saturday. Is equal to five. I'm doing this. I'm assigning. Uh, I'm creating a dictionary and providing the numbering. And finally, whatever the day of week that I have basically got, I'll map it. I'll map it to this particular dictionary so that wherever there is Monday, right? Wherever there is Monday, it will get replaced by one. Wherever it is Tuesday, it will get replaced by two. And Wednesday three four five six seven like that only. Now as soon as I execute this, and if I go and see my head part, you can see that all the numbers are here. Okay, so Thursday is getting assigned as four. Now what is the exact use of this, guys? Understand? Suppose uh, uh, I want to I want to hire a person. I want to predict the salary of that particular person, and I I, I want to consider education as one of the criteria. And suppose I have various education sectors like uh, you know. Uh, that person is having masters it may be having phd okay so as the education level of the person increases i think uh, he'll be getting more and more salary now that education will be one of my categories right and if i am able to assign a new category of label which in decades yes over here what it will happen is that suppose i have uh, masters i have phd suppose i assign a phd higher value and masters a little smaller value right so at that case you know that master is greater than phd right sorry phd is greater than masters right so for the phd i'll be assigning a higher value so that basically indicates the machine learning algorithm will understand that okay this category actually has a higher value in compared to the other categories that we basically have and this is a very good technique uh, and this is also called as label encoding and you should perform uh, and don't uh, exactly perform uh, in uh, in like again uh, if you have uh, a fixed number of categories, you can definitely do that, but it will not be suitable if you have a very, very long number of very, very uh, larger number of, uh, you know, different, different categories that are present in that and ordinal categories I'm talking about. Okay. Now, here are some of the advantages and disadvantages of ordinal measurements. Uh, but I, in short, I've given you the uh, example I've explained to you, but you can basically read through this, you know, uh, ordinal measurement advantages. Uh, you know these types are basically uh, you know ordinal measurements are usually done in most of the surveys with respect to machine learning it keeps the semantical information of the variable this is what i was ex exactly explaining about the straight uh, and the implementation is quite straightforward you know you don't have to do much of the things into this uh, some of the disadvantages is that it does not add any machine learning value information so this was all about this particular video i hope you understood what is ordinal number encoding uh, and uh, yes uh, i'll see you all in the next video have a great day ahead thank you one and all